ahead and stand. Let's get ready to praise the Lord. By the way, happy Father's Day to all the fathers, but only the best father is right here. So happy Father's Day. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Everybody that's a dad is a great dad. So thank y'all for what y'all do. Thank y'all for loving y'all's kids. All righty. Let's go ahead and worship.
melted I drink from Oh, He is my song Let the King of my heart Be the shadow where I hide The ransom for my life Oh, He is my song You are good spiritually or even physically I pray that this morning that you just surrender it to the Lord because I know sometimes it feels like we're drowning that we're sinking in our life and in our spiritual life but I promise you God's holding you up God is allowing you to float right now and I just pray that at this time God that you just overflow this this sanctuary, Father, with your love. God, for the ones that are hurting, for the ones that are even in joy, I pray that you just surround us with your love and with your comfort and your peace, Father. For God, we need you more than ever, even on our best days. 
God, that we just humble ourselves right now and we just give ourselves to you. So let's sing this all together. Let's believe these words, Father, that you call me out. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, the seed may fail. Oceans deep, my faith will stand. I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. I am.
Amen. So thank you for participating today. And it's like a lot of you got the memo, but you didn't get the full memo. I said all men could dress themselves today. I mean, I went all out. <laughs> I went all out to dress, for, dress for myself. I mean, I even changed my pulpit to a barbecue pit. You know, the crazy thing about life. Now, let me ask you, if you didn't get a ticket, and you guys didn't get a ticket, we want to make sure you get a ticket. Did anybody not get a ticket? All the guys? Okay, Eric Blair, he snuck in the back. Give him a half a ticket. <laughs> so for, for some of you that came in after the service started, um, when church is over with, we're going to do a quick raffle. I'm going to raffle off these two wonderful Walmart barbecue pits that, you, like I mentioned, that you can only cook hot dogs and hamburgers on. I got a, few, a couple of gift certificates to uh, Cracker Barrel, and then I've got, um, I got a, a real man's barbecue setup to give away to one of you. You're either going to like me or you're going to turn into a man when you get this because you can't help but 
upgrade your barbecue pit. You know, the crazy thing is, is um, probably about three years ago, uh, the most grilling I ever did was hamburgers, maybe a steak on the grill, hot dogs, but nothing, no ribs, no brisket, no pork or anything like that. And like I said, about three years ago, a friend of mine, uh, Jim Trapinski, um, one of our first members, a Calvary Chapel guy coming into our midst, one of our first Calvary Chapel guys, and he and his wife just jumped in and started helping us grow the church from the very beginning. And uh, oh, Jim had had a smoker made. You, you've seen it. That was his smoker out there when you walked by. He had that sucker made, and um, he was good. I mean, he was good at it. I know he's watching me right now because he, he told me he's watching. You were good. But, man, I have turned that thing into a monster pit. And, uh, you know, the crazy thing is, is, is it wasn't until I got the pit that this wonderful gift got unlocked inside of me. And, um, and let me tell you something. It's a gift to get out there and, and smoke meats. And it's a lot of work. Now, all you pellet guys, the pellets, grills, they're good for good barbecue, but there's not as much love to put in a pellet grill as what I did. So let me just tell you, so, so Thursday morning, I got up early, came up here and put, the, put eight pork butts and two briskets on at uh, about six o'clock in the morning. I smoked them all day long, all day till about uh, seven or eight o'clock that night. And I got my friend Billy Ellis. We came up here and we shredded it all, put it up in the refrigerator, made a mess, sorry, um, we tried to clean up as best we could, uh, put them in the refrigerator. I got up this morning at 4.15, and I came back, and I lit the pit just to give you the smell of barbecue, because barbecue's already cooked. But I got up at four, because I wanted to warm the barbecue up inside the pit, and I wanted you to smell it, because I wanted to put all this work in it, because I wanted you to know how much I love you. Because let me tell you something, you know, the, the love is in the work, you know what I mean? And, and I'm... And, and, and to feed, to feed people, I'm learning is one of the greatest gifts that, that, that we do. I mean, I'm a father, and uh, I never did any backyard grilling until I had kids. Once I had kids, I mean, something just came alive inside of me, and I needed to get a pit and, or a grill and start cooking when you have kids. When you're just single, you don't do that for some reason. You just you do it on the stove and all that kind of stuff, but you, you transform, and... Uh, and I know that, like this guy right here, I don't know if you know this, who this guy is. He's one of the greatest fathers in the world, this guy. But I like this quote from the, the Christmas vacation movie. He goes, his son goes, Dad, this tree won't fit in our backyard. He said, Russ. He said, it's not going in the yard, Russ. It's going in the living room. <laughs> and I thought, you know, as a dad, as a father, you want to do credible things. And like when I said, I want to cook for the whole church, when they were just, how are you going to do that? Don't worry. I know how to do it. I'm going to cook for the whole church. Well, who are you going to get to help you and plan it? I said, don't worry. I'm going to work it out. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what I got to do. And, and we're going to figure it out and make it simple. Because matter of fact, you can still go out to eat after you eat one of my pork sandwiches. Because I made it so you can either take it to go. It's, it's like an appetizer. Now, if you stick around and get a second one, if there's enough, you can get full. But I'm hoping you just get you an appetizer, know what I can do, and then if you need to go still, you're still early enough to go to the restaurants because we're, it'll be 11 o'clock before when you're done eating. And, um, and so I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm setting this up because as a father and as a man, I want to set a certain standard. I just want to set a certain standard for my life and for the people in my life. I just want to make sure I set a standard. But before I can make a standard, I got I to gotta make a declaration for life. And uh, <laughs> this is the best meat of all is right here, okay? So, <laughs> I knew y'all like that. Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24, the children of Israel have come out of Egypt. The children of Israel have spent 40 years in the wilderness after spending 400 years in Egypt. God had to spend 40 years shaking Egypt out of his people 
before they go into the promised land. And then he has been 40 years to shake Egypt out of them. And then once they go into the promised land, they still had to transition to a different kind of people. And, you know, there's, there's, it's Father's Day. And, and uh, I mean, I had a good father and I'm blessed to have my father still with me. I know a lot of you have lost your fathers. I know for some of you, this may be the first year without your father. And, uh, and I, I'm sorry about that. I, my heart hurts for you. And, and it's Mother's Day and Father's Day is very difficult for me because I know that I'm blessed, but I also have walked through so many, with so many people who've lost their fathers and their mothers over the years. And, and I understand the pain and, the, and the heart, how hard it is on this day. That's kind of one, I just wanted to change it up and just um, make it fun and festive and just you know, enjoy this coming together and just enjoying what we have, especially after last year. Especially after last year, we, we learned how easily our rights can be taken from us, whether it was a legitimate thing or not. It don't matter. Our rights were taken from us. And we were forced to live a different life. We, we were forced to think a different way. And we've even come out of it different people. And so I thought it was very interesting that, you know, in a couple of weeks, we, we celebrate you know, the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And so what I thought I would do today is we do the declaration part today. And then on July 4th, we'll do the other part. But I thought about declaration. And um, where did I put my... Oh, here it is. Got a lot of pockets. Just so, just so we're clear what a declaration is, if I'm going to talk about it, I want to make sure we all know what a declaration is, just the definition. There's three different definitions of a declaration because it does mean three different things, but I want you to look at the middle one. It says the formal announcement. And a formal announcement means announcement that you make in a way that you want people to hear. It's, a, it's, it's just like a, today would be a formal announcement where we just want to announce something. Like when my future son-in-law formally asked my daughter to marry him with us. It was, a, it was a declaration of his love for my daughter and his commitment to her in front of everybody. It was a great declaration. I'm still proud of you for that. I'm still trying to get over that. It's awesome. But it says it's the announcement of the beginning of a state or condition. Now, we live in a very complex society. We live in a complex world, and you're part of a very, very, very complex system of government, of culture, of nature, all kind of things are in play right now. All kind of things are in play. There's lots of changes going on. And so what I was praying about is we need men. Because in a world where we're trying to feminize men or trying to take our man card from us, telling us it's not okay for us to go fight each other sometimes when we're kids, look, a good fight is okay. It's kids. It's just, a, it's just good. It's good for character. I'm just telling you, me and my brother fought all the time, and we're great guys now. <laughs> Aren't we, brother? That's because he can whoop me now. <laughs> but listen, we, we need men. And, and today, today's a challenge to men. Fathers are no fathers. Yes, Father's Day is a great day that we celebrate, but it's your children's responsibility to be the ones to make sure that your Father's Day is good. My job is to make sure that all of us are getting challenged properly with truth. And so here Joshua is. He's coming out of Egypt. He's coming out of the wilderness, and he's going to say to the people on this particular day in this particular passage in Joshua chapter 24, He's going to talk to the people, and he's going to say, in the midst of an ungodly society, in the midst of us coming out of our own culture, because, you know, the thing about our kids is our kids don't really understand what a real Mexican is, what a real African is, what a real German is, what a real this is, what a real Italian is. We don't know because we're all mixed up, and we're just, we're all over the place, and we're all one. We are one. We all have one blood. It's the world that puts those labels on us. We don't put those labels on us. The world puts those labels on us. But our kids need to be taught, and so they they need to be taught by men who know where they stand. And we as men should know where we stand. We We should make the declarations. We should make the 
And when you declare it, you have to live up to it. You set a standard for yourself and you do it publicly so that, so that if, if you publicly marry my daughter and somebody sees you out in public and not treat my daughter right, you know, that says something about your character. Because when you announce your love to my daughter, what you're going to do is you're going to live up to that the whole time that you've declared it from the beginning when you declared your love for her. It doesn't change because you change. That declaration set in stone. It's, it's something that you have to declare for yourself and over your family. Because notice what he tells him. He says, now therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father serves. What he's saying is we've brought some of the old ways into our new life. And you can't bring your old ways into this new life. Some of you brought your old ways into your new life or you put them away and you started bringing them back. You've forgotten the declaration you made when you said you were putting them all away. And you started letting them come back into your life. You started letting compromise come back in your life. You started letting sin back in your life and you start... Today's the day that you declare you put away those foreign things that don't belong in your life and in your house. Amen. Put away the gods which your father served. It don't matter what culture you came out of. It doesn't matter what race you came out of. You're not about standing for your own race now. You're here to stand with the king of kings and the lord of lords. A new kingdom. A new race of people. One blood. One people. One nation under God. That's who we are. That's a declaration. We don't, let, we don't let who we were keep us from being who. Listen, when God called us, he set up boundaries. When you play in a football game, there's boundaries that you can't cross. But you can do a lot of choice making in the middle of that field. And that's where God lets us make our declaration in the playing field. In the course of our daily lives. Put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in, the, in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Your appetite. Your desires. Your dreams. What you want out of this life. Or what the Lord wants for you in this life. Each and every one of you are not living for yourself. You don't live and die to yourself. Your life affects other people and your death affects other people. Life and death affects other people. And if it seems evil to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served. Do you want to keep your ancestors? Do you want to keep your culture? Do you want your culture to be the number one thing that you keep? Or do you want what the new culture the Lord has for you in this new land as a new people? That's, because I can't tell you, listen, I was raised way different than a whole bunch of you were raised. I was raised way, way differently. But yet, man, my spirit bonds with so many of you like we were born together and like we were, were taught together. The Lord just puts us on the same playing field. It's just crazy how much we are like now. Is believers. Man, I mean, some of you guys in another world, we would never cross paths. And yet we can fall in love like we've been together forever. I would die for you. That's what's crazy. I would. I would die for you. Because we're, we're the same people now. I'm your brother. We, we don't necessarily have the privilege of bringing our culture into our Christianity if it crosses the boundaries of Christianity. You don't hold your culture to a higher place than you do this new culture that God is laying before us. <laughs> or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. We got saved, but now we live in the land of the Amorites. America is now the land of the Amorites. It's a sin city across the nation, not just the one city now. It's, that's across the nation, sin cities, across the nation. But look what Joshua, he makes this declaration. He stands up at the door of his house and he makes this declaration. He says, before me and my house, we, 
Notice he, he, take, he says he includes all those in his house. We will serve the Lord. He's making a declaration he's going to be the man of that house, and that's what's going to take place in that house. Every single man over his house doesn't mean that you're a chauvinist pig. My wife's the most privileged person in our house because I stand in charge, because I make the rules. I love my kids. I'll give them space with me, and I'll have patience with them. But it's my house. I make the declarations. And today, I declare that as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. What that looks like, that's between you and the Lord. It's going to look different for everybody, that serving the Lord part. That's, that's going to be different for everybody. We all have our different little, you know, areas that we live in. But, and I'm not here to live your life for you. But you let you and your relationship with the Lord make sure when you stand before the Lord... Because in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Notice he's sounding like, enjoy being a kid. Walk in the ways of your heart. Listen, kids, this is the Lord speaking to y'all. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth. And let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart. Do what you want to do. And in the sight of your own eyes. But know that for all these, God will bring you into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh. For childhood and youth are a waste. Because you turn into adults and you got to pay bills and you got to take care of business and you got to pay taxes and obey traffic signals and... Drive the circle around idiots and all that kind of stuff as adults. <laughs> what, he's, what the Lord is saying, what the Lord is saying is you, you, get, to, you get to choose a lot for yourself on how you live. Because you know, because your parents try to tell you to do one thing and you fight with them to do something else. So you know, that's what the Lord is saying. But he says this, that one day you're going to grow up. And if you're not careful of the decisions you make right there, you're going to be at this altar crying like you see people do a lot of times because of the choices they made in their youth bring them to the altar because they got on the wrong trail, on the wrong path. And there's, now there's got to be redemption and all that hardship and dealing with the cost of sin. And um, it don't have to be that way. It don't have to be that way. In Romans 14, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. And every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. You men especially are held to a higher degree of responsibility in this Life. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he has suffered in the flesh and has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. So let's look at what the will of the Gentiles is. Lewdness. Lusts. Drunkenness, revelries, careless living, drinking, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. The interesting thing is they think it's weird that you don't run with them like that no more. The interesting thing is they think you're stupid or you're crazy that you've changed paths, that you walk a different walk, that you stopped partying with them like you did. You stopped hanging out with them like you did. I remember when I stopped, it was very difficult, and people laughed at me and gave me a hard time, but I was such, so radically changed that did not, there was not one person in my family, there was not one of my friends that was saved, so I didn't have any friends to run to, and I found them all at church. The only people that I became friends with were the ones in church for a while, but that's just, in regard to these, they think it's strange that you not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you, which is making fun of you, is what they did. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. 
And then at the very end of Ecclesiastes, Solomon says this to the kids again. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find the acceptable words, and what was written was upright, words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads. A goads a something that keeps you going in the right direction. It procs you like a horse when you poke him. What he's saying is this, these, the words of the, of the Lord are, are, are to prick you forward, to make you nervous, to, to push you this direction. And the words of scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. And further, my son, be admonished by these of making many books, there is no end. That means there's a lot of learning you can do. And much study is wearisome, wearisome to the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. This is, this is real life stuff that we're going to have to face one day. I know so it's hard to think supernatural and it's hard to think about your death when you're so young sometimes, but some of us older ones, we're going, yeah, we think about it quite often. And that's why I see some of my older Christians, what can I do? What can I do to help the Lord? What can I do to help the Lord? Want to just because you don't, have, you don't want to spend any time in, more in the flesh. You want to just keep going forward, right? Thank God for long life. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of city season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Don't be scared to tell people, man, you're probably making a bad decision going that direction. You're probably making a bad decision doing those things. You're probably making a bad decision hanging out with those people. You're not judging them. You're not trying to hurt them. You're just trying to warn them because you know, you know, I know, you know, we know. Bad company corrupts good habits. That's a truth. For the time will come, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. We're living in the days where there are so many different churches, so many different directions, so many ways to heaven. There's only one way. You know, in all honesty, I wish there were many ways to heaven. I don't want to know anybody going to hell. But there's not. There's only one way, whether I like it or not. Whether it sounds egotistical or not, there's only one way. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they want to go to church, they want to feel religious, they want to feel like they're connecting to God, but they don't want to hear the whole truth. They want to be told they're okay. They want to be told that Jesus loves them. They want to be told that Jesus has patience with them. That's all truth, but there's also truth in your actions, getting the consequences of it. That's, you know... <laughs> you know, it's just, it, 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 I'm nervous because I know that, that, that people die all around me. And I know that nobody lives forever. And, and it just, just saddens my heart to know that there are people dying and going to hell when they don't have to. People that sat in churches, that's the hardest one. Because they sat and they listened to these guys. They said, who will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things. That's what a father tells. That's what a man tells the people under his responsibility. He's, he tells them the truth. But be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of evangelists. Fulfill your ministry, man. Stand guard over your house. Stand guard. You men over your house. Because at the end, we're each responsible for our own load. Listen, I know that Father's Day is, is, a, is a unique day. I mean, <laughs> I feel special already, you know, just, just being me. And um, I'm thankful for what God has done. But let me tell you, some of you guys who have not been good fathers, instead of letting the devil tell you 
that you've been a bad father because that's the devil's job to tell you you've been a bad father. It's not your family's friend. It's, it's not your family's or your kid's job to tell you you're a bad father. That's the devil's job to tell you bad father. He's the accuser of the brethren, not us. But I tell you this, that even Samuel, his boys went astray. Elijah, I mean, uh, Eli, the, t- the priest that uh, prayed for Samuel, his kids went astray. Aaron, the first priest that God anointed, his sons offered profane fire and God killed them. King David, his first three sons were all over the place. Even Solomon's son, after he comes, is going to split the kingdom. Adam, the first man, his first two sons, one killed the other. God, the father of Abraham, Adam, I mean the father of Adam, Adam failed. And the interesting thing was when the Lord came into the cool of the garden and Adam and Eve were both hiding, it was Adam's name that the Lord called. It says it's in Adam that all die because of what Adam did, not Eve, because of what Adam did. He didn't take his post. He didn't stand guard. He didn't stand guard over his wife and he let his wife rule the roost. He didn't take charge and and next thing you know, he condemned us, not Eve. It says she was deceived. Not the man. So today, we have responsibility, guys. We need to make declaration and declare it today. I declare that as for me and my house, we're going to follow the Lord. And if you do that, men... You may not know all that's, that comes with that. God will be patient with you and work it out. But you've got to first declare it Amen. before you can walk it out. And if you declare it, you're more likely to live up to it, to strive to live up to it. I knew that when I was called, I didn't know what that was going to look like. I didn't know where that was going to leave me. But I said it from the very beginning. I'm called, I'm called, I'm called. Because I knew it. And I said it and I confessed it and I declared it. And so I've chased it, and I've pushed through with it, and I've got to the point where I feel like, man, God, you got me ahead of the game. But I'm thankful for my position so that I can challenge men. Step up to your position, the God-ordained position. God-ordained position. Women have their place, very special, very powerful place. Very powerful place. But men also carry a very powerful position, different than the wife, different than the women. And we both need to understand our roles, but especially the men, because each man is going to stand before the Lord with his own load. And you single moms teaching these young men, you make sure that you hang out with the right kind of men to help you with your men, if you can. Amen? Amen. So what I'm going to pray is I'm going to pray that you feel and inside your own heart, right where you're at, men, you declare, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You make that declaration. You pray that prayer. And then uh, we'll move into the good stuff. Lord, we thank you for this day. Father, I pray for every man in here, Lord God. And for every man who's willing to make a declaration, Lord, I pray that in their heart right now, Lord God, you can hear him and see him. And Father, I challenge every man right now that's making that declaration to stand up before you and before this congregation to make that declaration. Go ahead, man. Stand up. Make that declaration in your heart. You standing up as you making that declaration in your heart to be the man that God has called you to be so that you can take guard over your house. God needs men because, listen, I'm so thankful for the men in this church because a lot of churches have a lot of women that do a lot of work, and I'm thankful that I'm trying to outwork all the women. But today is the day that we make a declaration as for me and my house. I will serve the Lord. And, and, and your girls and your wives and your women around you hold these men accountable to that. Because for, for the sake of truth and what's coming in this world, we're going to need to be together in one, 
one accord in our understanding of our, our position of Christian men. So, Father, I thank you for these men that have made this declaration. And, Father, I ask you to bless each and every one of them. And, Lord, that you would just continue, Lord God, having patience with us, challenging us, and moving us forward. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, everybody, sit down for just a second. I'm going to bring these tickets up here, and then once I, get, once I give this stuff away, all you guys with your Hawaiian shirts, y'all come up here. We're going to get a picture and uh, show the rest of the world how cool we are. All right, so men, get your tickets. Now, just real quick, stand up, Patrick. Stand up, Patrick. Turn around. Yeah. So let me just, let me, oh, whoa, 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 don't clap. Look, look, this guy's from Pennsylvania, I just want to say right off the bat. <laughs> First thing, when I said I want a Texas-style barbecue, this is what he thought a Texas-style barbecue was, apparently. <laughs> so, just so you know, you get one mulligan, and today's your mulligan. <laughs> hey, but look, but you can, I'm going to go ahead and give you this, because I need to man you up for, for having the courage to do that. All right, sit down, man. All right, everybody got tickets. Here we go. All right, here's the first ticket. Uh, 470, the last three numbers, 470. 470. Baja. <laughs> Gift certificate. Yeah. All right, the next one is 551. 551. 551. There we go. All right. You visitor? This is your first time? Oh, he's from Maine. Oh, welcome, welcome to Texas, man. Check go to Corral from Maine. All right, 481. 481. Yeah. This Sit that down right there. You get the whole pit. We'll, we'll take that off in a minute for you. All right, here's for the last pit. Here's for the last pit. 488. 488. Hey. Is that it? Okay. Yeah, so you guys with the Hawaiian shirts, if y'all come up here, any of you that need to leave or whatever, we have pictures. You can go get a picture over there. And then my workers are going to be outside. You walk through. You grab a bag of chips. You grab a drink. And uh, if you want it to go, they'll, they'll pack it to go for you. And if you want to eat it here, you can just eat it here. So, Lord, we just pray for that food. Bless it, Lord, because we know it's good. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go. Let me see the Hawaiian shirt, guys. Come down here. CC, get our picture. Just squeeze in here, guys. Squeeze in here. You little guys up front. Nice. Look at all these wide shirts. Nice. Come on, come on, come on in. Come on in. Come on. Come on. All right, we need somebody to take the picture. No, down here's fine. Yeah. Get some pictures. We'll get several of them, then we'll post them. Can you get all of us? Hurry up, Cece. Hurry up, Cece. All right, here we go. Hawaiian barbecue, Hawaiian barbecue. All right, thank you all. All right. Go get fed. God bless you. Happy Father's Day to you, bro. Here in the Father's house, check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. to
find me Cause that's what my father does